looks like an old Quicksilver MX from bygone days. It is. It's a 1981 uh, Quicksilver MX. Is with the Cayuni engine on it. I can see that. The old 430 Cayuni here with the, exactly. the, exhaust, the Fisher exhaust system on it. Yeah. Now, how, how did you get involved in building an ultralight? Well, it happened several years ago. In 1979, my, we were both pilots, my wife and I, and she lost her medical certificate, and we were both passionate about flying, and so we had to figure out some way that she could fly, and the ultralight movement was in its infancy. And so at that point, uh, we decided, well, hey, we'll just build an ultralight. And so what we did is we built a and uh, a weed hopper and we scratch built it ourselves a friend of ours had one we just sort of copied it and put a Cayuna engine on it and then that's how we got started flying in ultralights in 79. Now there's a special story on this one though you've got a 1981 Quicksilver? Yeah it's a 1981 Quicksilver it's not totally original uh, we picked it up last year used and I put a big man bar that you see here on it and I added steerable nose wheel and a couple other things, I added uh, wing fences because I'm a little bit on the heavy side. And so I found out the guys that fly the uh, MXs on pontoons put these wing fences on. And then in addition to that, I added one wire out to the wing tip. And I figured that that increased my lift somewhere between 8 and 10 percent, those, those two additional things. And it had the original maple prop on it supplied by Quicksilver. And it was a little inadequate, so I put a new prop on it as well. Well, we bought it last year, and we've probably put uh, 70, 80 hours on it since last year. Did you uh, build it then, or did you were you able to buy it? Well, we, well, we sort of reassembled it and put it back together. But it's got the original fabric on it. Original fabric, yes. Uh huh. Now, the 430 K on engine on it. How many hours did you say you were flying on it? Well, we put 80. Now, what was interesting? It had the original engine on it, and it was un unknown how many hours it had on it. It started faltering. And so I took it apart and found out that the engine was about to seize. And I found a brand new in the engine box from Pterodactyl. So that is a brand new 22 year old engine that was meant to go on, on a Pterodactyl. And I picked it up used on the internet for 500, or you know, for $500. It's not used, but, but certainly a new engine. I was an Air Force pilot. I flew uh, B-52s for uh, four years, and I was a T-37 instructor pilot for four years. I got 1,100 hours in both of those airplanes. Then I flight instructed in the Navy in the T-2, which was made in Ohio, where we live now. And then I've been uh, instructing in colleges for 10 years, uh, Indiana State, University of Illinois, and Ohio State, and I now work for flight safety, and I'm a Citation 650 instructor. You take all of that knowledge and experience, and yet you're flying for recreational ultralight. I love to fly, and this is the most fun flying that there is. I mean, it's the freedom and the spirit of flying, and this is where you get it, right here at the grassroots. So, And you get to do your own maintenance, and there's not a medical required and no license, and so that's kind of really how we got into it. Although I am an airline transport rated pilot, I'd rather fly this than anything else. If somebody wanted to talk to you about uh, some of the experiences you've got. You got a name and address you want to really reach out? Yeah, uh, my name is Phil Martin at uh, 11307 North Lake Drive in Lakeview, Ohio, 4331. My email address is pyr at woh.rr.com. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. This series of short video clips gives information on the Ultralight Flyer's recommendation for aircraft that we have flown, owned and or built, which were produced in the early 1980s. All of these aircraft still have manufacturers producing parts, for their repair and continued airworthiness. In this segment we will take a quick look at the Quicksilver MX. The Quicksilver MX entered the market in the early 1980s, it was originally designed by Jack Hutchinson for IPA aircraft as a single-place weight shift control ultralight. 
The Quicksilver MX is a high-wing, tri-cycle gear, two-axis control aircraft in a pusher configuration. It was the first ultralight to be mass-marketed and mass-produced. The bolt-together assembly kit required no manufacturing of parts by the builder, all fabrication was done at the factory. The kit took between 60 and 80 hours to assemble, using common hand tools, and could be built in as little as a one-car garage. The Quicksilver was the first ultralight kit on the market to come with a very comprehensive assembly manual, with all of the AN bolts and anodized tubing clearly marked and supplied on shrink-wrapped packaging boards. Originally power was supplied by the Cayuna 440 engine but this power plant was later updated to the Rotax 377 and then Rotax 447 engine. The Quicksilver MX uses stick and rudder two-axis controls, with the stick connected to the elevator and rudder. The rudder pedals are connected to spoilerons on top of the wing. The craft uses a right hand stick and left hand throttle. One of the unique features of the Quicksilver MX is that the pilot can deploy both spoilerons at the same time by depressing the rudder pedals, this kills the lift on the wings and allows the aircraft to get into very short runways. At the time of production the Quicksilver MX was the market leader for ultralight aircraft, and the Quicksilver line of aircraft still leads the world in ultralight aircraft style kits today. The Quicksilver MX is one of the safest, most fun flying ultralight aircraft I have ever flown, and I highly recommend it. The ultralight flyer rates the Quicksilver MX, A+, when powered by a Rotax engine, with good fabric, an airworthy propeller and a low-time engine. Estimated resale value in the year 2020 is $3,500 to $5,000 for a used not abused MX. If considering purchasing a used Quicksilver MX it is the ultralight flyer's recommendation that the plane's fabric be tested and the wires, landing gear and reduction drive be thoroughly inspected. For a troubleshooting report on the MX, visit www.ultralightnews.com. If the history of the engine is unknown it is recommended that the exhaust be removed and the pistons inspected for wear and seizure. At the time of production of this video the ultralight flyer would estimate the value of a used not abused Quicksilver MX is $3,500 to $5,000.